Hey friends, today we are going to be shopping around for some Disney props and memorabilia. We're going to be looking at some Nightmare Before Christmas items, some theme park used props, and anything else that kind of catches our fancy. Anywho's, let's go do this. I've been told that there's lots of new items here at the Lakeland Antique Mall. So if you guys want to purchase anything, I'll put all the information in the description below so you can check it out. I am very excited to see what cool items they have in here today and I'm hoping that the Illuminations barge piece that they had for sale last time I was down here, it was a piece of the actual globe from Illuminations is still available because I think I might buy it. But if not, I'm sure I'm going to be heading home with a lot of nifty items. We're just going to dive right on in and if you guys have any questions about the prices I will leave the phone number for the Lakeland Antique Mall and they'll be able to give you the price information in case I don't say it but I'll try my best to actually say all the prices. First thing that I noticed is this really awesome case full of Disney name tags and a Disneyland cap gun. That is amazing. This is from the 1950s and it's a Disneyland. You can see it right on the uh, handle there. A cap gun, $225 and look at all the name tags. We've got Ruby, Lizette, Brian, Catherine and this rotates. Ooh, and also some Walt Disney World security badges. These are so cool. $395 for those. Oh wow, I like this. The cap gun is really awesome and super rare because you know, they're definitely not selling cap guns in the parks these days. And in the beginning of the video, I was talking about some Nightmare Before Christmas items. And here is just a couple of them. There's a lot more in the back that I want to show you. But this is a Jack and Sally uh, metal sculptures that they actually have. And it's done by Mike Williams, who's going to be on the show Forged in Fire. And just look at the detail they put into this. And these are very heavy and massive. This is all spoons right here. And then down at the bottom, Sally, she has a little canister of frog's breath and this is actually a magnet so it comes off how cool is that both of them are signed by the artist actually down here and the sally is actually huge definitely my height uh jack is a little bit smaller and he's on like a pedestal here but i like them both and i think they're really really amazing so cool i mean look at jack look at this there wasn't a price listed for the Nightmare Before Christmas statues. I just think they're kind of cool because they're one of a kind. They were customly, they were commissioned, made by them. Right up front in the art corner stand, there's a bunch of the Winnie the Pooh art. And this is all original artwork, but they do have a couple of other amazing things like the Grand Floridian chairs. These are really, really popular because they have that giant hidden Mickey in the back. And these are selling for $135. And then if you take a look over here, and I love this. This is a Fantasia music stand. $795 for this. Look at that. Oh, look at the bottom too. So much detail in there. Very, very fancy. Another interesting piece that I kind of just walked by are these character plates. And this one is very special because it is signed by Mark Davis. I'm going to flip it over, but I have to be gentle. So it's $1,600. So I'm going to be gentle. I have to put the camera down. Okay, here's the back side of it. Look at signed by Mark Davis, 39 of 100. And it was sold for $1,000 back in, I mean, I don't even know when. Look at how old that price tag is. Walt Disney's gallery. That's pretty interesting. And they also have a Pinocchio one over here that is signed by Frank and Ollie. So this is, a, like, these are really interesting pieces. And here's the back side of this one. And you see you have Ollie and Frank's uh, signature. And this one's seven out of 100. So it's very, it's like I said, it's very, very rare and cool. One of my favorite things about shopping around for props and memorabilia is finding things we really don't know a lot about. You know what I mean? You kind of have a good sense of what it is, but you don't know. And that can go for uh, pieces of just like generic props or uh, autographs too or signatures. You don't know who it's from. So it's really interesting because it's kind of like a gamble. You know, you go all in and on it and it could be worth something way more than what you thought it was. For instance, like take a look at this vintage Icon Mickey metal, I don't even know what it is, topper. Now this could have been used for anything, a flagpole, a statue in Disneyland, but 
we don't know anything about it like it's so like mysterious but it's heavy this is super duper heavy and i love it and uh, it's definitely showing some uh wear and tear it's got some serial numbers on there and it's selling for 495 dollars right now at my house and in my like personal collection i have a giant sunset picture of spaceship earth that i have no idea where it came from uh there's no uh autograph or signature on it no serial numbers but it is so beautiful and we know that it came from like uh an epcot's office inside the park so it's really cool and i'm gonna hang on to that because one day it's gonna pop up and i'm gonna be like that's mine i own it Take a look at this really interesting old piece of clothing. This is a bathing suit, a Mickey Mouse bathing suit. And the mannequin is just a mannequin. And this is a picture of the bathing suit itself. And this was, I think they said 1937. So this bathing suit with Mickey Mouse was made in 1937. That is super rare. And they're selling it for $525. But things like this kind of get me like excited. I'm like, oh wow. Take a look at this really awesome Sorcerer and Mickey stained glass. This is another piece that there's no information about it. It's literally just a Sorcerer Mickey stained glass. And it's selling for $695. It has hooks on top, so it definitely hangs somewhere. Like it was just kind of like hanging, but I really like it before i was showing you guys some of the grand floridian chairs and they have a lot of other chairs that have really cool hidden mickeys and then some of the artwork that's in the grand floridian rooms that i really do like right here is one of the big grand floridian chairs that they would have in the rooms and they're selling this for 235 dollars and it is a big huge chair but if you look closely it is full of hidden mickeys do you see it in the material here that is so like really really awesome they have tons more of those chairs right there and then even some of the photos that they would have hanging in the grand floridian rooms or in the bathrooms so you got alice in wonderland here and uh i like them these are selling for 150 dollars, and they'll actually ship these out for you so if you want to purchase any of these i'll show you the card where you have to contact for them to actually ship it if you're looking at getting any of the smaller items actually shipped to you, just reach out to Recycling the Magic and they'll actually, they'll, they're, they're setting up shipping and uh, I'll put all the information in the description below, but that's for a lot of people that can't make it here. There's also a nice collection of different hard hats and construction companies from, you know, either uh, WDI, Disneyland, or Walt Disney World. And those are kind of cool. I know a lot of people like to collect, you know, hard hats. And there's a Mickey Firefighter hard hat from Disneyland that I think is so amazing. They keep the good stuff up high. You can see Disneyland construction hat, $695. There's the red Mickey firefighter hard hat for $345. Uh, the Buena Vista Construction Company's uh, vest right there. A Disneyland 60th anniversary one. And then they have a couple more amazing things up here. I really do like it. A lot of old props and big figurines. And I like the Mad Hatter over here. Look at that. You see him in the corner there? And he's got a script. He's reading from a script. I should have just kept on panning because then you see the Walt Disney World band. That's a drum cover right there. That is really, really cool. I love the Mickey on there. That is interesting. I, I can't see the price though because it's on that little sticker there, but I love it. They have this nice little locker setup that has all the different cast member awards and really interesting items in here. You can see right here, there is a Walt Disney and Mickey statue. This is a huge bronze statue and this is selling for $1,200? Yeah, $1,295 and I like it. Walt looks really, really awesome. But if we take a look down here, this is what I was talking about before. Look at that. A piece of illuminations. I love it. Illuminations reflection of Earth, October 1st, 1999 to September 30th, 2019. Closeout crew, thanks for everything. And right there's the piece. Isn't that, I, I mean, it's breathtaking. <laughs> Right above it, there is a Disneyland Main Street electrical parade light bulb that they're selling for $75. The temptation is real. Last time I walked away from it, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? 
Here is some more band memorabilia. This is a Disneyland music stand. And look at how that actually has the castle right there. This is selling for $195. And also, I like this Mickey key holder or wall hanger here. Kind of a little vintage. $325 for that. This is really awesome. You can see actually all the hooks down there. Here are some more Nightmare Before Christmas items. I really like all the different Nightmare Before Christmas items. Some of them are Jim Shore. And this back here is a collectible movie uh, like case with uh, Jack on top there. So the DVD is down below. That's $295. And then take a look at this Cruella de Vil car. I love this. This is $695 made by Patty Gordon, signed, and it was sold at the Disney on a convention. And it comes with a certificate, and uh, there was only 30 of them. Only 30 of these, and it's so nice. It comes apart, everything's felt. Corella would be speeding around in this. She'd never get crazy, though. Take a look at this awesome trophy right here. This is a really awesome collectible. This is from Disneyland in 1962, and it was awarded runner-up for float, the best float, Christmas in many lands. So when the stores were actually in Disneyland and they were operated by different people, not Disney, it was their job to actually make the floats or decorate them. And they gave out awards for like best float, and this one was the runner-up. From 1962 though, it's got a little Santa on top. This is cool, but I don't know if there's a price on there. I don't see nothing. Oh yeah, $595. Here are a couple more pieces from the Grand Floridian. These are the nightstands here. And these are actually really fancy. Like when you think like luxurious, oh, the Bible's in there still too. And I like it. It's very, very cool. If you remember the Christmas tree trail at Disney Springs, they had all these different Christmas trees decorated to like characters and movies, and they have all the ornaments now. They took the ornaments off the trees, and it looks like we're gonna be getting an all new Christmas tree trail this year, because they got rid of them. You can see all the ornaments are like separately like bagged up here. Like these are bags of gold, and this is from the jungle the Jungle Book tree. Okay, I'll try to turn it upside down for you can see. Sorry, it's going in and out. There we go. The uh, Robin Hood tree. So it's selling for $11. Isn't that really nifty? And then they have the Mulan tree with all these different flowers. Uh, some of the uh, Jungle Book tree, the bananas. These, these are really nifty. And actually you have a little bit of everything. You have a whole tree made up over here. Right here is a cool collectible of a Chernabog. Look at the Chernabog's hand here. And this was from Disney Villains, the Disneyana convention. I love this, 1997. And this has autographs on it too. You can see there's an autograph on the watch right here. No information what that autograph is or that signature. So if you don't know who actually signed it, and look, it's falling down here. We gotta put it back in. There you go. Up front, we were showing you the plates, and one was signed by Mark Davis, and they have the Nightmare Before Christmas ones back here, but we don't know who the signature is. Like, who signed this? Like, I can't tell. And both of the plates, this one is eight of 50, and that is really interesting. So if you guys recognize that signature, let me know in the comments. Also, I wanna show you this piece down here, but I have to pick it up. Take a look at this Hercules vase right here. You have Hercules, you have Meg, Pegasus. I love this. This is so cool. And then you can see Zeus on the back there. This is a really cool piece and it's super heavy. And it looks like it's selling for $495. And it comes with a little certificate of authenticity along with it. Let's see here. Original art and concept by Cody Reynolds. I like this. 1997 it was made. But it's so, like, I love Hercules. You guys know, I'm a Hercules fanatic. Take a look at this massive Walt Disney Classic Collection piece. All hail the Pumpkin King. This is really, really nice. And especially for the people that love Nightmare Before Christmas, it's selling for $995. And that is a real good deal because it actually has a little crack in the back here or else it would be selling for like $6,000. That's crazy. Just a little tiny crack will take the value away like that. $6,000 for something like that. They have another nice piece over here, Beauty and the Beast. This is $14.95. A couple of uh, Pinocchios and Peter Pans here. 
and then these actually used to be sold in Norway I believe yeah. look at that here is some more art uh, well signatures of Mark Davis the art of Mark Davis and you can see it's some of his favorite artwork and then signed by him and I like this this is $425 and then take a look at this this is a really interesting piece because this is Disney's MGM Studios and this was a special event that they had for the super soap so soap operas at that time this was in 2002 and these are all the passes brought to you by Colgate in total and uh, here's a little bit of uh, description and a thank you letter to the manager that was hosting it I don't know stuff like that is kind of interesting to me and that's selling for $195 I always want to make sure I point out Melly's remarket here because I love all the custom artwork that she does and every time I come in she's got something new but this right here is mind-blowing look at this desk it says if you can dream it you can do it Walt Disney and I love this <laughs> this is so cool it's selling for $330 and she made this and she makes all this artwork like the Haunted Mansion window right here with the blueprint of the Haunted Mansion. Ooh, the Hollywood Tower Hotel glass. This is really, really cool. And I like how it says drop in and I love the work that she does. $165 for the Tower of Terror. Here are some more awesome decorations from Magic Kingdom. And this one is really cool because it has the tag on it where it actually tells you where it was used. And you can see this was in Liberty Square uh, on an arch over two doors facing the Liberty Tree Tavern. Isn't that really awesome? I really love that. It's a little uh, like certificate of authenticity right there. Take a look at this big banner for Nightmare Before Christmas. And this was exclusive to the uh, exclusive to the store. It looks like, and I like this. This is two hundred ninety-five dollars. But anyone that loves Jack or Sally, this is like a really cool thing to have hanging in your house. Well, that was really fun, and I really didn't get to go around and explore a lot, but I do have plans, so I'm going to head to Hollywood Studios and meet up with some friends, so I figured I'd just carry the video over and bring you guys along with me, and I wanted to show you, look at this, how fancy. This is so cool to be able to say that now I own a piece of Illuminations Reflections of Earth. Like this is it, this is an actual piece of the globe from the center of the display and I'm so happy, I'm so happy. But like I said, now we're gonna head over to Hollywood Studios. I have to run home, I'm gonna take Gracie out and I have to change my shirt. This is my Batman shirt. I uh, spilled a little soup on it because I stopped and got some soup. I live about 45 minutes maybe from the Lakeland Antique Mall. I never really timed it since like the first time I went down. But uh, yeah, I stopped to get some soup, put a little soup on my shirt. So I'm gonna change my shirt and then we're gonna go to Hollywood. I'm trying to decide where I can hang this at. I'd probably keep it on this wall because this is like my Epcot wall, you know? Uh, but I'm not too sure where I can put it. I don't know if I can just like set it right here. I think that'll look pretty good. Maybe we'll hang it up right there. Excellent. I think it looks good there. I like it. Right underneath eyes and ears, Epcot Center is now open October 1st, 1982. And then I got this beautiful spaceship Earth. I feel like lots of spaceship birds. Bing, bing, bing. Got the uh, Mickey and Goofy comic, Universe of Energy up there. And then this is a really cool thing. This is Epcot Center News Brief. This is basically the uh, lineup for uh, opening day. Well, day 16. And isn't it so cool? The uh, resorts that were open were the Contemporary and the Polynesian. Future World was open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. World Showcase was open 8 a.m. to only 3 p.m. Isn't that crazy? Why would World Showcase close at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? And Danny Kaye's co-star of the television special Epcot Center is going to be at the opening celebration. On second thought, I don't think I like it there. I'm going to probably move it, but we got to take little Gracie Goo here for a walk. You ready, Gracie? There she is, the most beautiful girl on earth. Answer the call. What? You gotta go pee pee, come on. Let's go. Let's go pee pee. Come on. She's looking at me like Uncle Orville here. No privacy at all in this place. Good baby girl, 
Good girl. And just like that, we are in Hollywood Studios. Would you look at that? It's magic. It's movie magic. The funny thing is, is coming from a place that sells props to Hollywood Studios kind of connects a little bit. Because I remember coming here when it was MGM Studios and I used to go into SIDS and they used to sell movie props in there. Like I remember looking at stuff when I was on vacation before I ever thought about even getting a prop and I was like, wow, this place is so cool. So I think we're gonna check it out. I'm gonna show you guys inside there. Right here it is, one of a kind antiques. And this is now just a photo pass uh, spot right now. Like that, they don't take photos in there, they just have the photos available purchase. But I still wanna look around a little bit. They used to sell autographs in here and these are some of the autographs. Like this is everybody who uh, was in the Lion King. Look, James Earl Jones on there, Matthew Broderick. Same thing with like Bambi over here. This is a really cool picture right there. Here's the cast of Aladdin and they used to sell this stuff in here So you used to be able to buy it Right here you can see an autographed poster for Willy, uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory A couple of other really cool things Winnie the Pooh, Beauty and the Beast And they actually sold like physical props too I remember But I don't think they have any more The only thing they have close to like a physical prop would be over in this corner here But none of this stuff is for sale Look at that isn't that amazing? Ooh, and then look at this. Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper. Sadly, I never bought anything from in there. I wish I could go back in time and buy something because I remember looking at it and thinking, wow, this stuff is so neat. Like, I remember them having like a television, like a, a not a television, a phone from The Sopranos. They had all different types of movie props and now it's just kind of what it is now. Now that we're in Hollywood, let's take a look at the wait times. And it looks like Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is a 95 minute wait. Smuggler's Run is 70 minutes. Slinky Dog Dash, 115 minutes. Toy Story Mania is 55 minutes. One thing I wanna do is I wanna do Toy Story Mania before I leave today because I have a Toy Story Mania competition happening soon. So I have to get my game up to make sure I win. And I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that later on. So we're definitely gonna try to do that. Star Tours is only a 20 minute wait though. Something that probably doesn't have a wait at all is uh, grabbing a beer at Baseline. So I think we're gonna head to Baseline, kinda chill out, grab a beer, formulate a plan, and just relax. You know, actually though, there might be a wait because Baseline, I feel like, is the place to be always. It doesn't look too bad though. Now you can actually drink inside so you don't have to stand outside. Oh yeah, a little bit of a line, not too shabby though. I think I'm gonna be going with a golden road. I think that's my go-to whenever I come here. And it started raining. A nice little golden road and the lights are on. And like I said, I think it uh, rained a little bit because you can see everything's wet. So it must've like flash rained. Florida is like that. We're gonna keep moving along, but honestly, the sky is looking really dark and stormy. Like I said, we kind of got some flash rain, but I do feel like it's gonna get a lot worse anytime soon. I think we'll actually make our way down to Toy Story Midway Mania because if it does start raining, then it's gonna be indoors. Most of that queue is indoors, so we'll be safe. And plus I said I wanted to try to get all freshened up and ready for my competition. I love coming over to Toy Story Land during this time because look at all the lights are on and it's still daylight out. So you get to see everything and it's just, it's very pretty. I wish we could ride Slinky Dog Dash, but before, like I said, it was a 120 minute wait. 120 minute wait. Holy moly. 60 minutes and I think we're gonna go for it. Let's go for it. Well, this is a big success. It's definitely not a 60 minute wait. If the first room is empty, then I think we're golden. Look at this. Wow. It seems so sad that Potato Head isn't working today though. I feel like I can hear air moving back there, but he's just not doing anything. And here's the sensor, so anything. Excuse me, make up. Excuse me, Mr. Potato Head. You think his batteries are missing? Or? He might. You'd have to check them. So I plan on doing a 
Toy Story Midway Mania charity event coming up in April with a lot of other TikTok creators. So if you guys want to check it out, follow my TikTok account. I'll sure. I'm pretty sure I'll be posting things about it. But basically, it's fifty dollars a person, and it's uh, I think ten different creators. And whoever wins gets to pick where all the money gets donated to. Of course, a charity. And there's a belt involved, and I am excited. So we're gonna practice. Practice makes perfect. Grabbing the glasses, now we're ready to go. So I'm not gonna be able to film much of the ride because I'm gonna be practicing, but I'll let you guys know the score as we get in there, of course. Oh yeah, see? That deserves CC's, my arm! Oh boy! Let's see. I think I need to step my game up. This wasn't the best performance here. I don't know that. I think you killed it. Oh, way to play, everyone. Some emotional Two six oh eight. Hey, look at you. Oh, close. You did good. I did my best ever. It's because all the things that we did. <laughs> oh. I was the best this hour. Oh I was 1,000 off. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, almost best this hour. Maybe next time, one eyed Bart. One eyed Bart. How long do you think we waited? 260, I think I'm gonna have to keep practicing. That's not gonna cut it. Some of these people I'm playing with can get 500,000. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's all fun. It's all for a good charity. And I'm excited to hang out with a bunch of other content creators. So, uh, yeah, I'm still looking forward to it. But I think with that, uh, we're gonna call it a night. We're all done here at Hollywood Studios. It's been a pretty epic day. You know what I mean? I'm happy that I brought you guys along with me just to kind of like close out the video. So I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.